when are the home prices going to stop going up? Because the demand is not going to go away, but affordability will go away. If rates get up into the high fives, the market is going to come to a screeching halt. Hey, it's Larry Gonzalez with the Mortgage Market Minute. It's been a while since I've been behind a couple cameras talking to you about, man, the thing that I love to talk about, which is the housing market, interest rates, our economy, the things that are affecting me and you in our day-to-day -day lives. So, so let's talk about prices. Prices are going up. Remember, we just got a new home sales report. New home sales report came out. I tell you what, you'd listen to the news and you would think that the housing bubble just burst. Not happening. All right, new home sales report out for April, down 17% month over month. All right, you look on the chart. All right, 17% month over month. That's pretty bad. That's actually closer to about 22% because there was a negative revision to the previous month. All right, and year over year, we're down 27%. And that's a lot. And why is that? There's a lot of reasons. All right, obviously, home prices have gone up a lot. If you look at the report, $450,000 is the median sales price for, for new homes. That's 20% increase. The average sales price, though, is over 570,000, which is over a 30% increase in prices of new homes. All right, prices are up, interest rates are up, and we'll get into that in a minute, but interest rates have also slowed down new home sales. But here's the biggest problem with new home sales. Can't make them fast enough. There's not enough, we've got supply chain issues. We don't have the materials to finish the homes. Lumber prices have actually come down. Housing prices, or the prices for all the, the material in the homes, we don't have them. We can't get them. They're stuck somewhere in a port, somewhere that's not where they need to be. And we got record low unemployment. Our unemployment hasn't been this low since December 1969. There aren't enough people to go do those hard jobs like build homes. And so builders, they're not finishing homes. Matter of fact, of the 440,000 new homes on the market, only 38,000 roughly 6% were completed in the month of April, all right? That is a hugely low number, all right? And here's this, here's the other problem, time. We talked about the rates higher, we talked about the prices going higher. But here's the other issue, all right? Typically, it takes about six months to build a new home. Well, because of all these supply chain issues, the lack of labor issues, it's taken up to 12 months now to complete the homes. And guess what, you can't lock your loan for 12 months. So people are afraid, they're not confident in wanting to buy a home when they have no idea if this home's even gonna be done in a year. So that was a, it was a really, it was not a good report. There's no two ways about it. But it's not because the housing market is going to crash. It is not because there's no demand for housing. The demand is there. It's just the homes are not, we're not building them fast enough to meet that demand. Wednesday, the Fed released their, their meeting minutes from their, their May meeting. And it really, there's no surprise, no surprise at all. Uh, they've been talking about raising the Fed funds rate by 50 basis points in June and then again in July. And they just reiterated that today. And, they, and Jerome Powell, Fed chair, has basically said, hey, we are gonna raise the Fed funds rate until we get inflation down, all right? And their goal for inflation is 2%. All right, we're in the eight, eight and a half percentile range. So they've only raised the Fed funds rate by 75 basis points so far this year. They'll raise it again in June, another 50. They'll raise it again in July, another 50 most likely. But at some point, they gotta, they gotta kinda see how this is affecting because it's not it's not an immediate effect when you raise the fed funds rate it's kind of like it's kind of like going to the doctor you're sick you got man cold like i had a couple weeks ago you, know, you start drinking the orange juice taking motrin it's not like that you feel better right away same thing with uh, raising the fed funds rate it's not gonna it's not gonna get inflation to go down it's, it's not right away it's gonna take a period of months for the, us to see the effects of that. And here's the other thing. There's three things right now though that the Fed has no control over. Supply chain, all right? Supply chain issues are no, they're, they're legitimately not going away. We're talking about China ports, we're talking about our ports. 
All right, we have significant supply chain issues across just about every, you know, every commodity, uh, COVID, China. China's basically shut itself down. China has basically removed itself from the world economy. As long as China has removed itself from the world economy by shutting down, that is going to, the Fed can't control that. The Fed can't control that at all. And then the other issue, Russia, Ukraine, uh, the war in, in, in Ukraine. Um, you know, my, my concern here is the longer this goes on, you know, Ukraine was a bread, is the bread basket for much of uh, Europe and you know, for, for Africa. What's going to happen with regards to all of the crops that go from Ukraine to the rest of the world? This is going to have an effect on cause famine because the foodstuffs are not, Russia's not letting the foodstuffs leave uh, uh, Ukraine. So as long as this war goes on, it is going to have a huge effect on us. The European economy is going to be negatively affected, way worse than ours, but it's, it's, we're going to feel it. We're definitely going to feel it. So, and the Fed can't control any of that. 50 basis points, 100 basis points, that's not going to stop what's happening uh, around the world. And that all affects us. Interest rates, interest rates are down. That's so contrary to everything that you're seeing in the news. They've come down. They've come down. I know a couple of weeks ago I was talking about 5.25% interest rate for VA. Um, and we're looking mid fours. And what happened? Well, Larry Gonzalez thinks rates just went up way too fast, uh, too high, too quickly. And I think we're coming back down to a, a more reasonable number. Will they continue to go up? I think they, there's a really good chance that we're going to be channeling between where we're at now, mid to high fours, and then uh, low to mid fives for much of the next you know, three to four months, uh, unless you know unless something drastic happens. But that's what it's looking at. At what point do prices start to decrease, or at what point do homes stop selling? I think if we get interest rates above five and a half percent for VA, I think you're going to see a big stop. Certainly home prices are going to have to come down because the affordability, it's not going to be there anymore. But we're not there. We're, we're almost a point lower than that right now. We're still in a good spot. I'd almost say we're exactly where we need to be with interest rates. I'd love for the rates to be in the twos. I'd love for the rates to be in the threes. But you know what? Probably in the fours, that's probably a good place to be right now. All right, that's going to keep home prices from going through the roof. All right, but it's going to keep the appreciation going up a little bit, a little bit, and that's not a bad thing. All right, so what? So what does this mean if you're a home, if you own a home right now, you should be looking at selling. If you're a buyer, I still think you buy. When I bought my first house, I bought it at near the peak of the market, 2005, and the market crashed right before I, I moved out to Hawaii. The value of my home had gone up to about almost 400,000 and then it dropped to like 330,000. I couldn't sell the home. I was stuck. And I actually, I was renting the home out and I was paying $500 out of pocket. I was able to do it because I had a budget and I, I'm, I'm stubborn like that. I'm not gonna fail. And then the market started to come back. I got enough equity in the home and then I refinanced and I started making a little bit. I started making about $500 a month. So I sold the home. I ended up buying the home I live in now with the down payment off the money I made off that first home. I sold it for $2,000 less than what I bought it for. If I wouldn't have bought that first house, I wouldn't have been in the position to buy the house I'm living in now, which has nearly doubled in value over three years. And I was thinking, it's kind of like standing on the beach with your surfboard, but not going in the water. Never gonna catch the waves if you don't go in the water. And the paddle may be rough a little bit, all right? And you may not catch every wave, but you will never, ever catch a wave if you don't go in the water. You gotta go in, you gotta, you gotta go in the water. You gotta buy a home. If I hadn't bought that home, I wouldn't be in a position where I'm at today owning the home that I own and owning the other homes that are going to give me, that not only are going to give me, they're giving me now passive income. You gotta get in the water. It's still a good market to buy. Interest rates are still supportive of you buying a home. All right, it's not for everybody, but for most people it is. All right, that's all I got for you. Have a great day. Have an awesome weekend.